Hey, in this video, as I promised, I will tell you about uh, the criteria for buying a lens for your DSLR camera. Okay, first of all, what you want to, to have, if you're a professional, you wouldn't be watching it you wouldn't know what to buy. So I'm assuming that you're a beginner. Uh, if you're a beginner, you don't really need expensive lenses. What you need is a long zoom. And I do recommend, as I mentioned in my previous video, the longest zoom possible. So you can buy Tamron, Tamron uh, lens, which is 18 to 250 millimeters. For Nikon and Canon, there is also a version that goes to 270 millimeters. So you can go for this one as well. Uh, now, you can sometimes uh, see and wonder why certain um, lenses are more expensive than others. So you might have a so-called prime lens, which doesn't have any regulated focal length. It's got fixed focal length, for example, 100 millimeters. There is no zoom. That's, so that's why it's called prime lens. And it's very expensive. And you would think, okay, what does this lens have that, uh, that's so expensive? First of all, because it's fixed length, it will have very good quality, at least it should have. Because uh, you lose, a, it's very difficult to, to you know, move lenses uh, one from another. For example, a lens like this, it really has got uh, several pieces of, of glass, of lenses inside. So it might have 9, 10 and sometimes even 20 elements, optical elements inside. So you can imagine there is a lot of complexity. And what happens uh, when you move them, uh, you lose sharpness in, the, for example, um, in the outer sides of the lens or in the, usually um, the center of the lens is in focus, but the, the outer parts, they lose sharpness. Uh, what else? Uh, the maximum uh, aperture is different. So you might have a lens that has got a maximum aperture of 1.4, which is quite a lot, big aperture. While standard lenses like this one, they start from 3.5 aperture. So uh, 3.5, 1.4, big difference. 3.5 and 2.8 is already quite a big difference. Remember, the aperture um, decides about not only about the, the, the amount of light that comes in, but also about depth of field. So if you've got 1.4, the depth of field will be very, very small. So it's brilliant for portrait photography, for example. Yeah, where you, you want to only have face in focus and everything else, including maybe even ears, to be blurred, right? So uh, it allows you uh, this, this additional um, feature. Okay, some lenses are simply poorly made. You can come across a lens that's got smaller um, focal length uh, range, for example, maybe 18 to 100 only, or 135, which is half of this, and it will have lower quality of that. Well, unfortunately, the price is not always uh, the best uh, indicator of the quality of the lens. What you can do is to go to various websites. I uh, like DP Photography, DP for uh, so sorry DP Review. DP stands for Digital Photography. So DPReview.com, and uh, they have very good uh, reviews there. And if you don't find the lens that you're looking for, you know you can Google it and find it somewhere else. Read the reviews before you buy a lens. So if you're a beginner, start. With, with this one, there is really no point, you know, going to hassle having various lenses, changing them every now and then. Um, what I did, I started my journey with the kit lens. Um, kit, it's called kit lens because it comes as a kit together with a with a camera when you buy it originally. It's the cheapest one. The one made by Pentax is actually quite good quality. Uh, Canon kit lens is not as good as Pentax. Uh, just you know, out of curiosity, I'm telling you, but that doesn't. Um, uh, there isn't much of a difference, obviously. Just the quality is a little bit better. Um, but what I want to say that even kit lens can be of good quality. So it, the fact that it's a kit lens doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, bad quality. The kit lens uh, usually, as a, as I mentioned before, uh, starts from 18 and goes to 55 millimeters or something similar to that. Um, which is the equivalent of 28 millimeters to, oh, I don't remember, 55 times 1.5, is it uh, 80, around 80, yeah, uh, millimeters. 
Okay, what else uh, do you need to, to know? Uh, as I said, each lens has got its minimum and maximum aperture. So this one, if you have a look, uh, it says uh, uh, 3.5 to 5.6. That means that at the widest angle, 18 millimeters, it starts from 3.5. And when I go to um, 55 millimeters, it will start from 5.6. Uh, millimeters. There are some lenses that have got maximum aperture constant across the whole zoom range. They're usually much more expensive than uh, than this one. So, for example, there is a Tamron uh, 17 to 50 millimeters, but it has 2.8 aperture across the whole uh, range of the zoom. So, not only is it constant, but it's also very low, 2.8 and as opposed to 3.5 on this one. So, that, so this lens is obviously more difficult to make than the Tamron, uh, so it's much more expensive, obviously, right? Okay, uh, the other thing that you need to know that each lens uh, has got a thread here so you can attach various filters. This one is 52 millimeters, uh, while uh, the Tamron lens that I have, actually I've got two Tamron lenses, and they are 62 millimeters bigger, so bigger filters. So when you buy more than one lens, uh, you might want to think uh, actually about the size of the of the thread here. So do you want to have two sets of filters? If you want to have a lot of filters, it might be expensive. Uh, so that's another aspect. Keep uh, keep the lenses uh, if you if you can uh, with the same uh, size of the thread. Um, and that's, that's the way I went the first time. I bought first um, this one together with the camera. Later on I bought this one, Tamron 70 to 300 uh, millimeters, which uh, has got aperture 4 at 70 and 5.6 at 300. Uh, this lens is very cheap now. It costs around 100 pounds, 120, and it's a very good lens. So I would recommend if you really are on the budget, go for this. And later on, I decided that no, I, I couldn't be bothered to carry two lenses. It's really pain in the neck, carrying them and changing them, especially when you need them. So what I did, I bought this one, Tamron 18 to 250. And I'm so happy with it. I really recommend you buy this lens. If you're an amateur, this is the only lens you will probably need ever. If you later on decide, you know, that you need something more, Fair enough, but don't worry about this now. Buy this lens. It really makes sense to invest into this lens. Remember that when you remove the lens, every time you remove the lens, dust comes into your camera and that also uh, can uh, make your sense so dirty, so you will have marks on your picture. Also, um, the elements of the camera might you know, stop working or there might be dust in your viewfinder. Um, so really it's best not to change lenses at all. So this one is a perfect solution. I do recommend this one. Um, what other lenses there are? There are lenses dedicated for macro photography. Macro means basically um, taking pictures of things when you want to have them really, really big. So if I zoom uh, this lens to 300 millimeters, uh, let me do it. Uh, just a moment. Uh, where's the zoom? Okay. So let's see. I, I go to 300 millimeters. I am really close to the object, so the object looks really big. And there are de dedicated lenses that allows you to not only zoom in, but also come very close. With this one, I need to be at least one meter away. So if you have a dedicated uh, macro lens, it will, for example, allow you to be as close as 10, 20 centimeters away from the the objects and zoom in so it will be much bigger so you can have one to one which is uh, uh, the, si the life size so basically what falls on the sensor will be exactly the same size as reality or two to one so it's twice as big as reality uh, so these are dedicated macro lenses this one is 1.2 so it's a uh, uh, half smaller still it's very good for for macro photography. I use it quite often for macro photography. It's a very good lens. Uh, nevertheless, this one might be a little bit better because it allows me to focus, I think, this one from one meter or even less. Well, uh, this one needs at least one and a half meters away. Uh, let me see. No, one meter as well. So, uh, yeah. Okay, actually, I have a scale on this lens and it shows me one to two. 
so it's half of the reality. One to three, so it's <clears throat> so the the picture is three times smaller than in reality. And if you had a dedicated lens, you would have probably one to one and maybe even two to one uh, on the lens. So that's basically what you need to know about lenses um, before you buy any. And again. I really encourage you to read reviews of any lens before you buy it. Unless obviously you've got lots of money to spend, uh, therefore, you know, it doesn't really matter. But if you are on a budget, do read reviews. Well, thank you for watching and then ask me questions if you have any. And I'll see you in the next video.